Here in the UK, our electricity is now pegged at 34p per kilowatt hour. And many of us are now conscious about how we can make some savings and what it actually costs to run things. So I thought it would be interesting to look at a typical ham radio station and see if we can come up with some ideas of what it costs to run the station and whether there's any savings we can make them. Is it worthwhile? Let's take a look. Okay, I see we've got power back now. Go ahead. I mean, days gone by, we just used to plug something in, switch it on and not really bother about how much it costs and possibly leave it on. Well, recently, I purchased one of these. Uh, I purchased it from Amazon and it, uh, I think it's about £15 and it measures the amount of power that's being consumed or going through the socket. I thought it'd be interesting to do some measurements. One of the first things I did was to plug in a kettle and see how much uh, it was drawing. And it was actually drawing over two and a half kilowatts and I was a bit worried about that until I found out that it only took about two minutes to boil half a kettle of water, which is okay for two cups of tea or two cups of coffee, and it worked out to a two, two P. So uh, it's not only how much current is drawn or how much wattage is being drawn, but also how long you're running it for. Likewise, on the car, the electric was about half the price compared with switching over to petrol. Now, the first thing I did was to check um, a couple of switch mode power supplies because every ham radio station is going to have a power supply and the switch mode power supplies are more common. So I took two. The first one I took was the Olinko DM330, which is a lovely power supply. And it's not generally known, but this power supply was originally designed for Porsche, Porsche cars, um, as a power supply for demonstrating various electronic equipment um, and sound equipment that was installed in the Porsche. And they wanted this um, power supply to be used in showrooms, so it had to be very, very quiet. And it's exceedingly well made. It's rated at 30 amps, ultra quiet, and it's worth looking at because it's a real quality power supply. Watson also do an interesting range of power supplies. We have the very popular PowerMite, which will deliver 22 amps continuously with a variable voltage. And we also have the PowerMax, which will deliver 40 watts continuously, again in switch mode. And these two power supplies also merit serious consideration. Interestingly, all the power supplies, the Watson and the Alinko, all have stand-in switch-on currents of about 8 watts. I also checked um, a small Watson analogue power supply, which is only rated at around about 7 amps, and that was drawing about 6 watts standing current. So I suspect, and I didn't have one to test, but I suspect your analogue power supply, which is going to produce 20 amps or so for a 100 watt base station, that would probably draw something around about um, 12 to 15 watts standing. Um, as I say, I didn't check that, but it's probably a good rule of thumb. So we're talking about about 8 watts on a, on a, uh, a switch mode power supply and possibly 12 or 15 watts on an analogue power supply. So what does that translate into cost? If we leave our switch mode power supply on all day, say for 12 hours, it costs just 3p. If we left it on all week, it would cost us 43p. And if we left it on all year, 24 hours a day, it would cost us around about £22. Well, that was looking at just the power supply. Let's switch the transceiver on. I've got an IC7300, so let's switch that transceiver on to standby and see how much current or how much power is uh, being consumed. On standby that draws 28 watts which is 0.224 kilowatt hours if we take an eight hour period 
and that's less than 8p per day. And if we were to do that every day of the year, it still only equates to about £29 a year. Well, not very much at all. It's quite economical, isn't it? I should explain, of course, that not everybody wants to save power simply for the financial side of it. Uh, many of us want to save power because we want to be seen to do our bit and conserve energy. But anyway, whatever, whatever your thoughts are on that, it's quite interesting to see the power um, that is consumed. So let me switch on my whole station now. I'll put up on the screen here my whole station and see how much power that draws. So with my full station on standby, I'm consuming about 60 watts. And that equates to, believe it or not, only around about 17p per eight hour day. Now let's talk about being on the air transmitting. It may surprise some of you to know that a transceiver is only around about 50% efficient. So your 100 watt transceiver is actually drawing 200 watts in order to generate 100 watts of power, which is why we have a 20 amp, a 13.8 volt power supply to feed it. And the same applies to linear amplifiers. Your linear amplifier will actually draw twice as much power to deliver half that. So we can again use that 50% efficiency figure. But there's another thing that comes into play, and that is on sideband we're dealing with PEP. So 100 watt PEP is not 100 watts continuous. And also we have to allow for the fact that you're going to have pauses between syllables and words. And in the past I've worked it out that basically the average power of an SSB 100 watt transceiver is only around about 25 watts because part of the time it's not transmitting because of gaps in words and syllables and so forth. And of course we're talking about peak power. So 25 watts is a typical average power into the antenna for a 100 watt transceiver. But we're talking about efficiency here and we know that the transceiver is only 50% efficient. So if we say the average power into the antenna is 25 watts, it's, in order to, to, to generate that 25 watts, it needs to draw 50 watts. So the average power drawn on sideband for a 100 watt transceiver is around about 50 watts. And we can apply the same ratio to a linear amplifier. Let's look at a typical 600 watt HF station running SSB. Accessories, 35 watts. Your 100 watt transceiver, average power consumption, 50 watts. Your 600 amplifier, average power consumption on SSB, 300 watts. It gives us a total of 385 watts. Over a period of two hours, you would actually be consuming 25p of power. Quite amazing. Of course, if you're running FT8, you can multiply that by a factor of four, I'm afraid. And of course, the drive power to the amplifier is likely to be far less than 100 watts, so it's all looking pretty good. So you see, running an amateur radio station is not quite as power hungry as you might have thought particularly if you're operating ssb it's quite surprising isn't it of course there are other bits and pieces in the station that i haven't included you've got the lighting and you've got heating but you've got that in the house anyway and i'm sure there's one or two things i've missed out which i'm sure you will uh, come up with but it's a basic indication of how much power a ham radio station consumes and more to the point of course how much it actually costs now the device i've used to uh, make these calculations or measure the power is a cheap device i got from amazon i have checked it against another device and it seems to be pretty accurate although the device can measure ac voltage and current the main interest from my point of view is showing the power consumed in watts and also the cost you can go into the menu and you can enter the cost per kilowatt hour and then over a set period of time you will not only see the amount of power being consumed 
but you'll also see the actual cost over that time period. It's worth it actually to walk around the house and check out other things like your TV on standby, five watts, day in, day out. Don't forget, by the way, to switch your ham station off when you're finished with it, because otherwise your switch mode power supply will be running day in, day out, and it all stacks up. And LED lighting is very efficient. I've got an LED reading light which consumes just over one watt. Quite, quite amazing, very efficient. And there's all sorts of other devices I'm sure you, you've got in your house that you'll want to measure, so it's quite a useful device. But it's comforting to know that the amateur radio station is not consuming as much power as we have. Now, I haven't come on to solar power. Yes, some of you've got solar power and so forth. Fine. But it's just basically looking at how much a ham radio station consumes in power. The answer is probably not as much as we imagine it might do. So it's comforting to know that it's not costing you that much. So I hope you found this uh, interesting. And... Uh, I thank you for your continued support on this channel, much appreciated. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it, at least it alerts you when new videos are coming up. We try to do at least one a week. Thank you also for your support down at Portsmouth. And by the way, I've just heard that there are some cashbacks on Yesu. So if you go onto our website, you'll see the Yesu cashbacks um, and uh, might, uh, well, it will save you a bit of money if you're in the market for a new, uh, a new rig. And uh, also our new website, I think it's working pretty well. I haven't heard of any uh, significant problems. Um, certainly navigating is, is far better than the previous one. So um, that is uh, nice to, to find that uh, we've made an improvement there. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.